Welcome to the Cisco Telepresence VCS System Configuration Video Guide. My name is Michael McGarry and I'm a Product Manager within the Telepresence Systems Business Unit at Cisco. This is one of six videos which will guide you through the basic configuration of a VCS control. Let's begin with Part 1, System Configuration. As soon as we log into a VCS control, we will see the overview page. This will give us a general understanding of a little bit of information about the box. Its IP address, software version, system name, and so on. Also the uptime and some resource usage information. Obviously this box uh, doesn't have any resource usage at the moment, uh, so we just basically have a basic configuration of the machine. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to System. And we're going to go to System underneath the System Configuration. Now, the first thing that we'll want to do is take and add a host name. This is the system name that's used within TMS or any of the remote applications that access this particular box. This is typically also the host name. However, it does not have to be the host name. But I would recommend that you have the system name at least close to the host name. In this case, we're using rcdn-astp-vcs1, which is the Richardson ASTP lab, uh, and this just happens to be VCS number one. Now, the next thing is, is that um, I will want to make sure that my session timeout is not set for zero. The default is zero, which means that it will never timeout. However, um, I typically want to add a timeout period for administrative access to the box. So I will put 15 minutes here. If you have a customer or if you are a customer and you have a policy of a session timeout, this is probably the best place to put that. The next thing is, is that we don't really need Telnet, especially if we're using um, an SSH client of some type. That might be P-U-T-T-Y on Windows or if you're using a Mac or a Linux based machine, uh, SSH comes native with the operating system. I would strongly recommend that you do not turn on Telnet unless you absolutely need to for some reason. This is just secures the box a little bit more. Uh, SSH is turned on by default, which is great. HTTPS is the only web user interface available to the VCS. Now, down here we have redirect HTTP requests, and I have it currently turned off. The default is turning it on. However, uh, this just opens up port 80 for one page on the HTTP daemon. So since it's only one page that does nothing more than a redirect to HTTPS uh, website, then why don't we just go ahead and turn that off and not even worry about it. Now we could, if we wanted to get into certificates, add client certificate validations, uh, but that is probably for uh, another complete different class once we um, add certificates to the box. So let's just avoid certificates at the moment. And what I'm going to do is after I've made any changes, I'm going to save them. Now the next thing we'll want to do is go down to Ethernet. And the default is to use auto. This particular box um, has auto negotiated Ethernet speed of 1000 and a duplex of full. Now if I had a switch port that was set, hard set to a specific setting, I would want to take and make sure that my VCS was also set with that appropriate setting. If I do leave it in auto and I see a 100 half coming up as speed, most likely my uplink switch port is not set for auto and it's set for some specific speed. So we want to make sure that those do match. Uh, this will be very bad once we start taking and putting media through this box if that particular set setting is not correct. So make sure, please make sure, 90% uh, of the time that I get questions on quality of interworking calls or, or traversal calls will be this setting right here will be incorrect and the partner switch port will not actually be set properly. Uh, the next thing I'll do is hopefully you've already configured your IP address for this particular machine. Um, but I'd like to go here just to make sure. Now, this does support, and 
and this is the basic configuration so we're going to kind of keep it simple here but this box also does support IP version 6 as well as it does support dual stack IPv4 and IPv6 at the same time uh, so if we wanted to we could actually add the IPv6 address and gateway here uh, but we're going to keep it simple at the moment we're going to go with IPv4 addressing space and in this case I've got a 10 dot address which is a private class address space now the next thing um, is quality of service. Underneath quality of service, uh, this is to tag differential services code point or DSCP, and this is a decimal value for traffic, call signaling, and RTP media traffic only. So this will actually take and make modifications to the packets coming in and out of this machine. Now if the RTP packets were flowing directly between two of the endpoints, then this VCS will not have the ability to set that correctly on the actual RTP packets flying between the two machines on a network only when the media goes through this box which may be for firewall traversal purposes maybe for IP, IP version 4 to IPv6 gatewaying as well as interworking a call between SIP and 323 and this tag value will be set on the packets um, exiting this machine so we're not going to go ahead and set this. We're already in a, uh, a lab network, and it's in a scavenger class anyway, so I'm going to ignore that setting. Now, DNS is extremely important. If you don't take anything else away from this, make sure that DNS is set correctly. If DNS is not set correctly, there's a lot of things that do not work properly. So make sure that DNS is set correctly. Supplying a servers, a set of servers, as well as configuring the host name with the domain. And this is the DNS domain. This has nothing to do with dialing. So if we're creating SIP domains, SIP domains are completely different. We may end up using the same domain, uh, but they are different. So this is really only for DNS. Make sure that this particular uh, host name with the domain is set in DNS correctly. So I'm going to bring up a terminal session window here, and I'm basically just going to type an NS lookup for rcdn-astp-vcs1.cisco.com, and I should actually come back with an IP address, and in this case I do. Make sure that this works correctly. Uh, this will be very painful later. Now the next thing that we'll go do is add a time server. In this case, I've gone ahead and added an NTP server. Um, and I've also given it a correct time zone, um, although uh, this box I know physically is sitting in Richardson, Texas, so I'm going to take and put Americas and Chicago on this particular box. Um, the reason that NTP server is important is a couple different reasons. Uh, one reason for which is, is that the log files do have date timestamps. So it'll be very easy to go back through log files later if we had to debug something to determine when this actually happened in time. But the other purpose is for authentication. We use NTP a lot in the different salty mechanisms in authentication. So we want to make sure that this time zone or time is set correctly. Uh, the next page is a login page. Uh, this is for any organization. Um, that needs to have a banner that pops up and maybe some sort of legal jargon down here as the welcome text. Uh, we can also add a graphic file if we wanted to take and put a graphic of, of a, uh, something uh, like a logo of our company or something like that right on here. Uh, we could do that. Uh, this is not required at all for basic configuration so that it works, uh, but it might be something that uh, your organization might want to add. Now, uh, we do have SNMP support. We support SNMP v2 and v3. Um, however, uh, TMS currently only uses uh, SNMP version 2. So this is why we have a v3 plus TMS support. Basically, we're adding version 3 plus the ability to um, support the TMS OIDs that will be queried. Now, this SNMP interface uh, even though we do have v3 here it's really not used for much of anything other than discovery now there's some other little tiny information here as well 
we could actually retrieve back the software version and the serial number and the MAC address as well. So we might want to take and add a, a username and, um, and so on for uh, this particular version 3 SMP support. Um, but it is just a query interface. There's nothing that can be set. So pretty much this is, um, uh, th this is a, a benign interface. Uh, but you may need to actually support uh, v3 for some purpose. However, if you wanted to just support version 2, we can turn that back to version 2. If you did want to go ahead and go to v3, that does not mean that you could not use this with the TMS server. Um, you just need to add this as a non-SNMP discovered device in TMS. So in the system uh, add systems within TMS, there is a, an advanced setting and you would want to tick box the non-SNMP capable device if you wanted to add this particular t uh, VCS to TMS and you were V3 secure SNMP only. However, the, the default out of the box is going to be V3 plus uh, SNMP. Uh, so we're going to just leave it, actually the default, I apologize, is disabled. Uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and leave V3 plus TMS support and um, we could, of course, change the system community name. Uh, the default is public, but we could as add any, um, any community name that we wanted here. So we're just going to go ahead and put Cisco and click Save. Now, external manager is where we would want to take and put an external manager's address. Now, we currently see an IP address here, but this could very well be a... Um, a DNS name as well, so a fully qualified domain name here. So we're going to maybe add um, yeah, one of our TMS servers and then .cisco.com and go ahead and click save and it should initialize momentarily and do a SNM, or I'm sorry, a DNS lookup and now we have 10.35.205.102. Uh, the next is logging. Underneath logging, uh, the log level is set to 1 currently. We do support the ability uh, to connect to a syslog server. And these are the remote syslog server addresses here. Um, you want to be careful. Log level of 4 is an awful lot of verbose information. I would only set this to 4 if you are absolutely diagnosing something very specific. Otherwise, I would leave this at 1, um, but do not leave this sitting here at 4 or 3. Uh, that is a significant amount of traffic, um, as well as it consumes the CPU a lot. If you wanted to take and see what the event log might actually look like on a syslog server, you can click the related task, which is view the event log, which actually then goes to a system status and to the event log page. And we see here's the event log. And you can also see we've made some modifications. Um, so that's actually uh, tracked in the uh, event log. All right, so that's it for system configuration. Um, and the next section will be the VCS configuration followed by dial plan. And then we're going to go through the applications, maintenance, and then we'll come back over to status as the last of these uh, in the series. Thanks and have a great day and look forward to seeing you in the next module.